This is the Orphan Espresso Apex, and it is, in my opinion, one of, if not the best hand grinders when it comes to filter coffee brewing. So this uses big boy flat ghost burrs in a hand grinder. It's one of the very, very few, at least largely produced, hand grinders on the market that uses flat burrs. And because it uses these really amazing ghost burrs, we end up with a flavor profile very similar to something like the Dating Lab Suite or 64 millimeter cast burrs from SSP, but in a hand grinder. So think about big clarity, big body, lovely rounding, lovely acidity presentation, all of these things in a grinder. That's what you get, that's what the Apex does. Let's go over the design of this grinder. So this uses big flat burr ghost burrs in this, and it's just awesome in, when it comes to performance. Everything else is very questionable, and this is the story that we continue seeing with OE products, and that's what you gotta sign up for when you get an OE grinder. So this is a hand grinder, and there is a hand crank that can go clockwise, as well as counterclockwise, and we'll be talking about that uh, as well. You have a grind size adjustment. This is clicked, so this is a stepped grind size adjustment. And for most of the coffees that I'm using, I'm definitely on uh, the finer side of things, and that is a double-edged sword. And then up here, you have a place where you load your beans in and you get a little bit, you get a little catch cup and there's a chute where the beans come out from. What I will say is I believe that there have been some iterations with the Apex where the feed, the way the beans feed in have been uh, adjusted. It will actually feed a little bit faster, which is something that would be greatly appreciated with the Apex. But yeah, this is pretty much it. It's uh, kind of like a weed whacker, as someone pointed out in that video I posted of me just literally grinding coffee with the Apex. The Apex is a very unique grinder. It's very unique in the sense that it is one of the very few flat burr grinders on the market that is in a hand grinder form. And I think the reason why this is a rare occurrence is that it's very difficult to actually make flat burrs work in a hand grinder form. So what actually happens here is that as we spin this, there's actually a gearing system to actually increase the amount, the RPM. So one, I believe one spin here equals three or four spins here of the actual flat burrs. But um, the biggest problem with this is actually torque. So grinding the, the beans. And we find out that the Apex, while it has such a lovely flavor profile, and it's, it's one of the most approachable flavor profiles I've ever had, it is just not a good grinder to use day to day. I don't know if you would subject yourself to this. You know, where is your pain threshold? And really, this can be demonstrated by grinding coffee. If you were thinking about getting one of these, you should consider bolting this to somewhere. There aren't even holes to do this, but I feel like, well, I just don't know why you would do that with a hand grinder, especially a hand grinder that is of this price point. I am just going to put in some coffee here and I'm going to grind it. And I think the Apex does light roast coffees really, really well when it comes to flavor profiles. Again, big clarity lovely sweetness, great rounding, big body, all of that. But the problem is, is that it is very difficult to actually grind the coffee. You'll find out that it stalls. Is it worth the effort? That's one thing that I want you to, to ask yourself as you watch me do this demonstration. I'm grinding not the finest, but a little bit more on the finer side. So I'm, I'm about three clicks past the middle point and I find that to work really well. This is something that you kind of have to physically and also mentally prepare yourself for when you're using uh, the Apex and that's actually grinding the coffee. So you know, I'm gonna drink some water. Get your daily workout here, especially if you're using light roast coffees. And I know some of you guys have daily this grinder and I think you are all insane. Uh, for doing that, especially if you drink light roast coffees. There's one friend that I have that uh, daily in Apex for a while, he switched to the Fuji Royale and uh, he's been having, you know, basically the same profile and he doesn't have to grind it himself. But, and I put the beans in here. This hopper is very interesting and you definitely want to have this cover on. The cover does snap on here. And uh, I am gonna hope things on this table don't fall over, but, <sighs> okay. This was undeniable. <laughs> so if you grind clockwise and you're using light roast coffees or if you're grinding fine, you this will stall. You have to really put in some effort. It will grind faster if I grind clockwise, 
But if I grind counterclockwise, it grinds slower, but it's much more manageable. So I'm gonna give this another go. You know, notice the grinder is already kind of kind of rocking back and forth. And I think, you know, bean density is gonna really impact here, but like, this is unscripted. This is literally what you have to deal with with an Apex. <laughs> and um, I'm not even grinding that fine for this coffee. So as you see here, you know, I'm trying to, I think the strategy is you have to do something like this. If I grind counterclockwise, it's easier to grind, but the grind time is much, much longer. It's much easier to grind counterclockwise. For example, I can use my non-dominant hand here, and uh, I can actually, you know, I can use my uh, non-dominant hand here, my left hand, and I can actually grind the coffee. But, yeah, if you grind clockwise, it is, it's a pain. These are frustrating things. You're, we're running into, you know, we can get the RPMs to go up, we can get the grinder to actually start grinding, but you end up with stalling. But the coffee's lovely, so that's the trade-off there, and that's why they want you to bolt this to a table, but, you know, we, I think practically speaking, you're gonna need to take breaks when you're using this grinder, because it, it, <laughs> it's, effort here and what I found is that if you sometimes shimmy between clockwise and counterclockwise you actually can help reduce jamming. Clockwise versus counterclockwise doesn't really seem to uh, change the actual flavor profiles of the cup that you get. Um, it's just where do you want to deal with the pain here? And uh, you know it's a very frustrating experience uh, to use the Apex. It really is. But I kind of am forgiving that a little because of the quality of cup. But I think today, you should really look at what other grinders exist on the market. Basically grinders that can fit 64 millimeter caspers in them. So we're basically done with grinding the 18 grams. We ran into some stalling. And this is what I've run into, and I think they fixed it with some of the more recent Apexes, is that you'll get one or two beans that are just continuously stuck inside of this chamber. Um, they don't want to go in there, they kind of just bounce around, and you'll get beans that are sometimes stuck on the edges here. You kind of need to shimmy it back and forth to get the beans to uh, feed in there, but I've had times where you're just spinning this and spinning this and spinning this, and you're seeing the beans just bounce, bounce, bounce over and over and over inside of here, and uh, they aren't getting ground we luckily got this one in. And that's really gonna depend on the actual uh, size of the coffee beans you're using. So I think if you're using uh, bigger beans, that is actually gonna be a problem. You will get some um, you know, chaff that gets stuck here because this is like, you know, these are flats and whatnot. Uh, but cleaning this is very, very straightforward um, in my opinion. You have to deal with this experience. Grinding the coffee is painful. I will totally admit that. but. It can be forgiven when the coffee is really good. And the coffee is awesome. I'm gonna go and do a quick brew with the Aurea and uh, I will tell you about how I taste it. And you know, the coffee might taste even better if you just invested all that effort and uh, you know, blood, sweat, tears, frustrations to get your coffee, your coffee might actually taste a little bit better. On one hand, it is very questionable when it comes to actually grinding the coffee. Um, if you were using something lighter than this, or if you wanted to actually grind finer, you really have to figure out if this is a right fit for you. If, if you wanna have a workout every day, I guess this is a great choice there. But there are definitely some other alternatives uh, on the market that are very worthwhile mentioning at a very similar, if not lower, uh, price point, and you don't have to grind the coffee yourself. Um, but it is very unique that this exists in a hand grinder and it is made by some lovely people. You know, RSI is real with these OE grinders, uh, but that's the trade-off because you get such a great flavor profile. It's not going to be this difficult if you weren't using such a light roasted coffee, but I feel like the Apex is so well suited for these light roast coffees, which is why we do this to ourselves, right? I have a friend who, uh, dealt with the Apex for basically an entire year with Passenger. He only drank these light roasted coffees and to him it was worth it. He eventually switched to the Fuji Royale, which was a, a really great choice and that offered a very similar flavor profile and he didn't have to get a workout every morning. But you know, 
you gotta think about it. Is that right for you? This do isn't built for light roast coffees in my opinion, uh, at least if you want to have a good experience with your life, um, but it produces some of the best cups that I've ever had with light roast coffees out of hand grinders. I've had plenty of cups out of the Apex. I've really enjoyed them, and maybe it's because I've invested all this time and effort into actually getting the grinder to, to work, you know? Um, but my Oreo recipe is pretty straightforward. I just put in 18 grams, I bloom until 60 grams, then I do 80, 80, 80 to 300. Very straightforward. I think this is definitely a grinder that is, you know, not necessarily suited for everyone. You know, I feel like you should really, really think about it. Is, is this worth your pain? potential pain. And I would much prefer a worse tasting cup out of a lesser hand grinder if it didn't mean I had to break my arms every single day or I had to, you know, worry about the grinder tipping over or me shaking a table and having a bunch of things falling off. You were a camper or something and you, you were using uh, stovetop stuff and you didn't want to use any electricity, then um, I think this is like probably a pretty good choice. I do feel like this is one of these grinders that is definitely uh, a bit more forgiving, really wide sweet spot, um, especially if you grind a little bit fine. Although grinding fine on the Apex is very painful, but there have been times where I've definitely ground uh, a little bit too fine on the Apex, and it's pretty hard to make these burrs taste astringent or bitter or anything like that. And, and that's because I think the presentation is very, very rounded, and overall in cup is just very safe, high clarity, but very comforting presentation. Yeah, it's just, it's good. It's so good. You know, I just love how it renders acidity. So for me, coats my tongue, get this lovely clarity. I, I get the acidity presented to me, but it's not presented in a very sharp way. It is very, very clear, but it's nice and rounded and you get big body from this. And it makes a lot of these light roasted coffees very, very approachable. It just tastes good. But the problem is that I feel like if you use light roast coffees with this daily, you are going to maybe want to uh, reconsider some things about your life because this experience is very, very questionable. And I think that, uh, you know, I'm not trying to directly say that this is bad. No, this isn't bad. This is just, I think, for a certain type of person. For me, I'm in the camp of, I would much rather deal with a way easier experience in exchange for uh, a worse cup. I love how this presents flavors. I love the taste of the coffee from this grinder, and I love using it with my light roast coffees, but specifically because I'm using it with light roasted coffee, because I think that's where this performs the best when it comes to flavors, um, it makes it so that my user experience is the worst. If I want to grind clockwise, it will stall. If I grind counterclockwise, it can take a really, really long time. You know, you can use dark roasted coffee with this, but I just don't think this is good for dark roasted coffee. I think this is so much better with light roasted coffee. And I would make the argument that dark roasted coffee out of something like this and a conical of a hand grinder that's easier to use. I don't know if you would be really hard pressed to want this, how this presents dark roasted coffee, especially if you are putting up with this experience of, well, yeah, the grinder rocks around. You need to maybe bolt it down or something. And I just feel like these are things that uh, you don't have to think about with any other grinder manufacturer. I really think that this is a very niche grinder for a few folks out there. And I love the actual performance and flavors out of this. I don't like the user experience. I think using this at least how I use it and even using it with other coffees is it's just kind of not fun but I think I usually forgive things when I actually taste the cups because these cups are so good. Let's also put in 18 grams and let's grind everything counterclockwise. Counterclockwise you get a little bit of stalling, less stalling, but you can grind this pretty fast. The coffee is grinding, but it might take a while. It's actually easier to do this. You don't run into any crazy like stalls, but it takes a, a hot minute to grind. So less stalls, 
less grinder tipping over. I like to use this technique where I hold and use the, my left hand and my whole body weight on the grinder, pushing down like this to prevent the grinder from moving. We're getting coffee to come out. But uh, yeah, apparently, and at least in my experience, I don't really think they're too big of a difference between uh, clockwise and counterclockwise in cup. <laughs> but I like that there's a meta for, uh, for figuring out if you should grind clockwise or counterclockwise on an apex, right? Maybe you should grind part of the coffee, uh, you know, force yourself to try to grind it clockwise and run into the stalling and, or, you know, we're stalling now as I say that, but run into the um, much more difficult, more amount of force and torque required to grind uh, clockwise and then you grind the rest counterclockwise or something. I don't know. But it is much easier to start uh, the, uh, the counterclockwise. So if, uh, for example, I get a stall here, it actually requires me less force to continue it counterclockwise versus clockwise. Oh my god. We're running out of words here. But once I going, if I really keep this going, you're usually good, especially if we're going counterclockwise. It's just that you'll really see these beans just keep bouncing and bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. Uh, but if I was grinding really, really fine here, for example, if I was maybe two or three more clicks to the finer side, it would actually take me five to 10 minutes to grind. Like we're talking a lot of minutes. So right here, I just have a bean that's just bouncing around on the inside and uh, I can't do anything about that. So I kind of just shimmy it back and forth, but uh, it is grinding, but I guess let me whip out my phone real quick and, and show you um, the, the inside real quick because this is kind of weird with the Apex and, and they did improve this by the way. So one, Bean will get stuck in that specific corner right there in these corners. So shards will get stuck in there. Sometimes beans will just get stuck continuously here. So um, I'm going to try to start this guy up. So you see there, it's, it's just bouncing around and it's not doing anything. But because I'm grinding counterclockwise, it's actually much easier to grind. But you definitely just want to be careful of beans. You know, now that finally went down there and then sometimes uh, some beans can just get stuck continuously in that chamber is right there. You see that bean It's kind of just not going anywhere is that it is just continuously Going inside of here, and it's going up and down up and down and it does not Want to get ground so that's the thing is the feed rate of this grinder is definitely a, a problem there I mean, you know, you saw it took me a long time to to the coffee. You know, that's kind of the overall experience of the Apex here is that great coffee, very questionable user experience. Now, I do want to also mention some alternatives or very comparable things to think about when we look at how do you get something very similar to this when it comes to in-cup performance. I think the closest to me is actually the 80 millimeter Didding Lab Sweet Burr. So if you have a grinder that can fit the lab sweet cast lab sweepers, I think this is the closest to that. And, and I think that's why this is so attractive is you, in my opinion, are getting very similar tasting cups to a dating lab sweet, which is very crazy. But if you didn't want to spend that money, the 64 millimeter cast lab sweet are already pretty close and you can fit those in grinders that are $300. So that's something to consider. And then other grinders also worth mentioning are things like the Bentwood, which offer also something very similar to this. And then really the one that's the closest to this, that's also going to offer you that ghost teeth burr experience is going to be the Fuji Royale, which um, is basically a motorized version of this. And I've had friends who have switched from Apexes to Fuji Royales and to them, the cups are basically the same or very, very similar and they don't have to deal with this specific workflow. Yeah, just turn the grinder on, right? You know, I know there's been a lot of interest in this grinder. Not a lot of people have talked about it, and I just, I'm sorry if this wasn't in your expectations, but this is the apex. I really think that this is a grinder that is kind of only for a specific type of person, right? You really need to think about if you're the type of person that is willing to deal with this type of workflow, that you're, you're willing to have a very high pain tolerance for a really awesome cup because you get a really awesome cup out of this. You get such a flexible burr set that can withstand various grind sizes and various roast levels and it's really good for light roasted coffee. But is that 
worth the workflow? Is that worth dealing with this? And also, is that worth the price when there are other grinders that, in my opinion, offer very similar flavor profiles? But I do think that this is a standout grinder in the aspect of this is a hand grinder and this gives you, you know, Didding Lab Suite performance, which is crazy to think about. Um, and it's in a relatively compact form. You just got to figure out if you want to deal with this. So yeah, that is the Orphan Espresso Apex. If you have any questions, let me know. I hope this wasn't disappointing to some of you folks who were really looking forward to the Apex video, but that's the Apex. Let me know if you have any questions, but uh, see you guys around.